I find Maya in her room, dressed like Tinkerbell and trying to manipulate a blue evening gown onto an unrelenting Barbie doll. Hi, sweetie, I say with extra <laughs> exclamation points. I've got something really fun for us to do. <laughs> what? Maya looks up, already suspicious. See this egg? I'm going to run it up and down your arms and legs, <laughs> like this. I demonstrate on my forearm. Why, she asks. Because Carmen says so. It'll just go up and down, up and down. It feels really good. I stroke the egg against the side of Maya's thigh. She giggles. It's cold, she squeals. A brief surge of interest ignites her eyes. OK, she agrees. Afterward, I dutifully return the egg to Carmen, who cradles it carefully in her hands and heads for the ravine at the bottom of the driveway. When she returns, she swipes her palms together noisily twice, as if to say, that's that. Then she takes a handful of weak old basil from the refrigerator and explains I need to squeeze it into Maya's bath water, taking care to pour it over the top of her head. Once you've agreed to drag an egg up and down your child's <laughs> limbs to remove an evil spirit, bathing her in basil is not much of a leap. Not only do I fail to feel ridiculous doing it, I try hard to do it right. Now things get easier around here. I know it, Carmen nods as she supervises the bath. These are very powerful actions, very powerful. It is not a complete failure. Maya doesn't mention Dodo for two full days. But on the third morning as we're driving to school, she calls out, hello, from the back seat in a tone reminiscent of a 13-year-old at the Sherman Oaks Gallery Mall. Can we get another car seat back here, she says. Another car seat, I ask, what for? She makes a little impatient noise in the back of her throat. For Dodo, she says. And just like that, he's back, as if he'd taken only a short detour before boomeranging back to his rightful place. El Dodo is more tough than we know, Carmen concludes gravely. Maybe we need to find that shaman in Belize, my husband Uzi says. The prospect of an otherworldly explanation for Dodo seems if not actually to please my husband, then at least to engage his interest in the removal process. Such a connection would support his belief that a simultaneous unseen dimension exists alongside the one we experience every day. Uzi believes in determinism. He believes in reincarnation and karma and a number of other intangible concepts that make me squint one eye and retract my head three inches when they come up in conversation. For a short time in the 1980s, I believed in such ideas, or at least tried to believe in them, until three years of graduate school, followed by five years in New York, wrung the last of those impulses out of me. But my husband, my husband believes with a certainty, with a calm and unwavering sureness I can't poke a hole in, regardless of how hard I try. This is a way of explaining why Uzi's face, when I tell him about Carmen and the egg, registers mild bewilderment. Not because of the act itself, which he thinks was a good idea and worth trying, but because he's surprised I agreed to go along with it. He didn't think I'd be open to such ideas. Open. That's the word he uses, as in I'm not being open enough, as if I stubbornly and deliberately walk around with an aperture that's too small. <laughs> I hadn't expected this when we married. I'd always thought of myself as the more susceptible partner, the one whose innumerable anxieties would make me more likely to embrace the unconventional if it offered reassurance however fleeting it might be. But over the past few months, I've started to think of myself as the more grounded partner, the one left juggling all the practical, earthly minutia of family life, while my husband spends what little free time he has reading books about the power of consciousness and alternative healing. It's as if I've suddenly become the capital letters in this enterprise, bold, solid, and assertive, while Uzi drifts around in italics, lovely and loopy, slightly off-center, constantly reaching for more. In late October, he befriended a group of people who call themselves pranic healers and claim an ability to clear negative energy fields. On weekends, they come over and sit around our kitchen table, drinking herbal tea and waving their hands in the air. Once when they were visiting, I had a bad case of hiccups. One of the women told me to stick a silver knife into a glass of water and drink it down. The metal would act as a conductor for the energy that's all around us, she explained, which would calm down the spasms in my diaphragm. I figured I didn't have anything to lose by trying. Also, I didn't want to appear rude by refusing. I was the only one in the room who was surprised when it worked. What do you believe in, Uzi asked me one night. I'm a card-carrying member of the Church of the Senses, I said. I have to see to believe. No, I'm serious, he said. What do you believe in, really believe in? The truth is, I'm not sure what I believe in. My current spiritual life resembles a religious greatest hits collection. 
patching together the highlights of Buddhism, Hinduism, Judeo-Christian theology, Jungian psychology, and practical street smarts. And my loyalty to even this fluctuates according to whim. Depending on my mood, I think either that the pranic healers are onto something really big or that they're full of shit. What do you believe in, my husband asked. Surely I must believe in something, the question implied. What do I believe in? Well, I believe in the sound of a lone acoustic guitar strumming in the back of a smoky bar. I believe in the scent of night blooming jasmine. I believe in the look of calm wonder I saw on my daughter's wet face right after she was pulled from my body and placed on my chest. I believe in the miracle of radio and the way it can pull music right out of the air. I believe cats can smile. <laughs> I believe, especially from the back window of a taxi speeding across the Triborough Bridge from LaGuardia late at night, that New York is the most magnificent city in the world. I believe I will get back there somehow one day. I look at my husband so eager and earnest as he waits for my reply. I believe in the possibility of everything, I say. So that's where the title for the book comes from. And, and I hope we will give readers an idea of, you know, a little bit more of what's happening in my internal life.